for you. The spell will keep it from wilting. She said you would need it for the journey ahead. Will you speak with her now? I cannot hope to match Minfilia's clarity, of course, but... She has lent me her body for only a moment. Just as I could not save the first from the flood of light, it has become arduous for me to interact with the physical world without assistance. Though I might converse with you for a time, the incorporeal form I assumed on the ship would be incapable of casting even the simplest enchantment. It is in the depths of the ethereal sea, the place to which all life returns, where my influence is greatest. After Menphilia's sacrifice on the first, it was to the sea, here in the source, where I ferried her soul. I wished that gentle spirit to find rest in the world she loved so well. and another who may yet have a part to play, though that will depend on you. Take the flower, walk free, for you are free to go where you wish, to believe what you will. That blue will be your guide and proof of your conviction. In darkness, seek joy. Surrender not to sadness, and see beyond despair. Walk free, and bear the light for others to follow. Together, raise it aloft, and let it shine, till the end, blinding, and radiant. <sighs> that was all too brief. Already she seems so far away. Apologies if I startled you. Ever since we began our descent into Labyrinthos, I had sensed another's will, straining to reach out. Even with my particular talents, though, I was unable to make a connection at first, so weak and tenuous it was. Once I took hold of that wispy thread, imagine my surprise to discover it was Heidelin herself. Needless to say, it seemed wise to learn what we could before letting go. Her answers were more cryptic than I would have liked, but at least she left us with a guide of sorts, that unusual flower. <laughs> yes, we are definitely making progress. Be serious! We've done nothing wrong! Master Fortuno? What business has the Forum with us? 
Obstruction and suppression, apparently. Mistress Baldessian. Our records show you facilitated the Scion's entrance into Charlian by claiming them as assistants for your organization. We are aware of your investigations. After alerting the major institutions to the presence of potential troublemakers, we received word from an Archean custodian. A group operating under the auspices of the students, skulking about Labyrinthos and engaging in clandestine behavior. Clandestine? We may not have entered Charlie and Scions, but we did naught to conceal our identities. Our only purpose in this city is to seek the truth. I can think of no reason why our actions should warrant the Forum's intervention. It is not our way to discourage the pursuit of knowledge, but the timing of such pursuits must be considered, not to mention their potential impact. With the world in chaos, we, the true caretakers of wisdom, have committed ourselves to an undertaking that demands the utmost discretion. And we will not risk its success by turning a blind eye to disruptive foreign elements in our midst. What then is to be our fate? Will you put us on a ship back to Eorzea? The Forum will convene to examine your case. The results of said inquiry will determine your future in this city. As for your absent companion, he has already been detained. Graha! But why? Is reading a crime now, too? Reading is encouraged, celebrated even. Not, however, of the volumes shelved in the restricted section of the library. Refusing to comply will only make matters worse. Let us instead treat this as an opportunity to open a dialogue with the Forum. Silence is often one's best defense. I would advise against prolonging the proceedings with frivolous discourse. But enough. This is not the place for debate. The Rostra await. Forgive me. I was careless. We would have been detained regardless. This way, at least, we managed to stay together. I trust your time within the Forbidden Archives was well spent. The Forum will come to order! This inquiry is now in session. As Speaker-elect, I will be presiding over the day's proceedings. Master Fortuner, would you be so kind as to restate the matter which compelled you to summon your colleagues with such urgency? As you are all aware, we recently denied Eorzea's request for Charlian assistance. Since then, 
Certain individuals dissatisfied with our decision have taken it upon themselves to interfere with our work. They entered our nation masquerading as associates of the students of Baldessian. But these malcontents are better known as the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. These militants wield influence with both the Eorzean and Eastern alliances, and are inextricably involved with the crises presently afflicting the world at large. Loose in our city, these warmongers sought to meddle with and expose matters of state secret. What are they if not a dire threat to be expelled? You have tarnished the good name of the students. Galuf would be ashamed. Galuf Baldessian was never one to forsake his fellow man. Even if this nation closed every door and retreated from the world, he would have found a way to help the Scions, help every soul of this star, fight back against the coming doom. A terrible enemy stands poised to lay waste to all we hold dear. In the face of such madness, Eorzea reached out to Charlian, a respected ally, in the hopes of forming a united front. Was your curt dismissal truly the best you could offer? Or are you so preoccupied with your momentous duty of an age long past that even the end of the world is unworthy of your attention? Whence came this revelation? from the mouth of a forum member within fortuitous earshot. Then it seems your findings support my own. The reason I visited the restricted shelves was to study records of the forum's policy-making process. To better understand the historical trends underlying their most major decisions. At first glance, the positions of neutrality in war and the accumulation of knowledge above all else appear constant and consistent, the unchanging pillars of Charlian society. And once upon a time, I might have left it at that. These days, however, I am more attuned to the subtleties of governance, and so I noticed something Odd. From a particular point in time, the purpose of these policies shifted. No longer was knowledge preserved for the benefit of society. Rather, society was to be gradually reshaped to ensure the preservation of knowledge. The most conspicuous and telling change was the one which befell Labyrinthos. Once little more than an oversized storehouse, an enormous allocation of funds saw it transformed into an advanced research and archival facility. I also discovered a fascinating account on the finances of our Dravanian colony. The settlement attracted students from far and wide, and the connections and tuition fees thus acquired were funneled into further improvements for the archives. Now, there is no question that our nation's progress is tied to the acquisition of wisdom. Nevertheless, the vast resources diverted for this purpose borders on the obscene. But returning to the matter of when, our change in course appears to have been made some 270 years ago. 
The very same period when Charlian scholars in the hinterlands began a formal study of the ethereal sea. You found something, did you not? And whatever it was, gave rise to your oh-so-important duty. Mind your tongue, Archon. If you had seen... Yes. We are bound by a duty we cannot ignore. Knowing this, what would you have us do? Abandon our vital work and join you on the field of battle? We will never choose the way of the sword. We will fulfill our mission not through strife and bloodshed, but survival. Come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do as you must, then. But we Scions will fight until the heavens fall, until our last breath. Such misguided zeal. Father, I... Master Fortuna. I fail to understand the stance you have elected to take. But by the same token, I have yet to find a compelling argument to counter the challenge you put to us in Gradania. Still, in the midst of my uncertainty, I must trust in myself to do what is right, as others have chosen to trust in me. So I will continue, as I always have, weighing the consequences of my every action, and allowing my hope for the future to inform my decisions. That's quite enough. Have you all forgotten the reason for this assembly? Skolok Montesheim. He's the head of the studium and an old friend of my grandfather's. Honestly, every discussion devolves into some interminable debate. Terrible habit. Let's return to the topic at hand, hmm? By their own admission, these Scions have resolved to fight alongside the Eorzean nations against the doom which Swift approaches. But there exists no evidence of an attempt to incite our citizens to do the same. Furthermore, while our decision may well have been the correct one, we cannot simply bull our way through these disagreements without inviting doubts or objections. Put yourselves in their place. Who among you would leave a tome unopened if an elder forbid you read it with no reason given? Now, if we're to quell further discontent, then we must conclude this matter with a fair and even hand. Order! We will have order! Master Montesheim raises some valid points. Keeping such concerns in mind, I propose we enforce the following measures. Until further notice, the students of Baldessian are to cease any and all activities within the domain of Charlian. You will also refrain from any further investigation into the Forum's decisions and duties. Failure to comply with these restrictions will result in the immediate expulsion of your Scion associates.
Let us put this judgment to a vote. All in favor, raise your hand. I count 51 for and 48 against. The proposal is passed. Students, Scions, you have heard the Forum's judgment. Pray abide by it, or face the consequences. Honoured members, I thank you for your time. This inquiry is concluded.